Biking around is one of my favorite ways to stay healthy and blow off steam. I've built all kinds of cool, smart lights for my bike, and I'd like to share that knowledge in a new series called Let's Ride. We're going to take a look at different kinds of LEDs, as well as how to use them with and without microcontrollers to stay safe and speedy. For this first episode, let's take a look at the Humble LED Throwy, the simplest circuit you can make with an LED and a battery. And we're going to talk about one confusing aspect of it. It's just some helpful background, so feel free to skip this one, and we'll get to making stuff soon. Have you ever wondered why on a battery the positive contact is called the cathode and the negative contact is called the anode? Well, on an LED it's different? It has to do with how electrons flow through the circuit. When you connect an LED to a battery, you're hooking up positive to positive and ground to ground. It makes sense the way they match up. What's happening inside the circuit is that electrons are flowing from the ground side of the battery to the negative leg of the LED through the device and out through the positive leg to the positive side of the battery. In each of these cases, the anode is adding electrons into the system, and the cathode is collecting them. There are also RGB LEDs, which encapsulate all three colors in a single module. These will typically have one leg, positive or negative, that serves all three colors, and then for the other leg, each color will have its own. It's essentially three separate diodes in a single package. You can get common cathode or common anode RGB LEDs. The longest leg is going to be the common one. In this case, that's the ground side. So this is a common cathode RGB LED. All the colors share a single ground leg, and each has its own positive leg, or anode. Here's an RGB LED strip. It has a bunch of RGB LEDs connected together. This one is a common anode RGB LED strip, because they all share the same 12 volt line in. And then each one has its own ground contact. As a final note, if you're building a real circuit with an LED and a battery, you'll probably want to put in a resistor. This prevents too much current from flowing through the circuit and burning out the LED. That wasn't so bad, was it? If you're really excited to get started, check out the links in the description below for some tutorials that I've already written about this kind of thing. If you already have a little knowledge, you can get started right away. Let's ride!